Salutations everyone, and welcome to Brainy Reviews Battle Station Harbinger by Bugbite Ltd, who are noted for games such as Dare Dogs, Ace Tales, and the Battle Station series. Battle Station's Harbinger is the latest installment of such series of 2D strategy space ship to ship combat. Battle Station Harbinger is an iOS port to the PC, and with this iOS port, they are offering a few things different from the base game, but you can still find the base game on your iOS for about $4. Now, before we get into the gameplay proper or any other explanation, let's take a quick look at the options menu first. In this iOS port, you can see that there aren't many graphics options to speak of, and that's because the graphics options are handled outside of the game before you actually start it up. But the only graphics options they offer are resolution, v-sync, and full screen. Naturally, I'm playing this in full screen, as that is my personal preference. Now, what the game does offer well in the options menu is a fully adjustable music and sound system, as well as fully adjustable controls from zooming camera, as from camera zoom, edge scrolling and a fully rebindable keyboard setup, which means that they've put a lot of time and effort into this board, as well as a few other options that I've turned off that pertain to gameplay. Now, Battle Station Harbinger is played a little bit like a roguelite, in that you have a set list of base characters that you can unlock as time goes on, in this case by either completing missions or dying horribly, that you take into a set of fully randomized levels with a semi-randomized story. I'm going to take the base ship on easy difficulty, as I die very often on easy difficulty and dread going up to normal for a bit, and we'll set it up for ran and we'll set it up with a randomized galaxy of this. And away from the base game, the game also offers an endless mode, as most of these are sets of four missions that you undertake in different sections of the galaxy. And after completing those four missions, you are given a finalized score. Now, without further ado, let's go. In this specific story set, we're going against the Trollgars. A very aggressive and greedy species, gathering resources wherever they can find them, always demanding and sometimes attacking without provocation. Some advanced tactics have been learned from other species, but nothing innovative. They are not an intellectual species. Technology is heavily projectile-based. The Trollgars have invaded this part of the galaxy and claimed it as theirs. They are building a formidable force and hiding a big of the station somewhere, so we need to stop them. I need you to seek out their mining outposts and destroy them before it's too late. Do your best, Commander. And naturally, there's also a bit of story behind each and every single one of the species, which you can encounter through multiple playthroughs of this game, as this game is in fact designed for a lot of replayability. I'm not going to bother reading through this, as that's just a bit of a waste of your time, so let's go. Eden is our little AI friend, who gives us hints and advice in between the very, very, very short loading screens. So, Eden, Commander. I'm incapable of locating the Trollgar mining stations. They could use a cloaking device or be hiding in the asteroid fields. Blasted Trollgars. You have to search every sector in this galaxy until you find them, Commander. And it gives us the objective of destroying the unidentified enemy ships, i.e. these three mining stations, and then this big platform in order to end the level. And with some very specific rewards. Now, the game just dumps you right into the game itself, which isn't necessarily a bad thing. The game plays in a pseudo turn based system where you choose to jump to very specific sections and all turns are resolved simultaneously. This will be explained a bit more after I'm done with my initial setup. So, here's our ship. This is all we have to control. Here's our ally, the space station, and his specific fleets that follow him around. These battle stations are your friends of the human faction that you are always a part of. Your ship moves quite slowly, as you can see, but combat is not very, very fast-paced. And speaking of which, here is our ship and the hull that we can attach our specific weapons or objects to. The Nightingale is classified as a light carrier, unless it has a carrier slot, as there are three different system types that I've been able to find. The hangar bays, 
the primary weapons, and then the sub-weapons. For this hangar bay, I'm going to select, what was it, laser drones, and then I'll select a projectile cannon as a part of my loadout. With the back being a laser cannon as well to provide some fire support in order to punch through shields. As you can see, there are two sets of health, hull and shields. You can drain shields to nothing, and it'll basically leave your ship none the worse for wear, but if you lose your hull, game over, as this game contains a lot of roguelike elements as well. You know, it wasn't really described as such, because when you die, game over. You have to get a new ship and restart from the beginning. Now, I'm going to upgrade this twice if I can, which unfortunately I cannot, but I'll at least boost the maximum number of ships I can have, so I can have a few more allies joining me around, and thankfully these allies are cheap for the low, low price of free. I'm going to grab a mission to help this station that is currently under siege, which is conveniently right next to us. So let's jump into the ship itself. Thankfully the jumps and thus loading screens aren't very long, and we've already destroyed our first enemy ship. I say that until these people show up. Now, as you can see, combat is definitely very, very slow. The shots that you'll fire are generally make up the bulk of combat, whereas movement and maneuvering, much less so, at least in these large capital ships. In smaller fighters, it's a lot different, as you can imagine. Now, my ship's currently being destroyed, so I'm just going to try to run to the safety of this space station so I don't die while letting my fighters tear them apart, and hopefully I don't end up dead as we still have another big enemy capital ship to get through, as this game does not like to hold your hand, and is very liable to just instantly destroy you, given the chance. So I'm going to focus all my attempts on destroying this ship to the detriment of my fighters, who are endlessly replaceable, but they can ignore the enemy fighters as much as I care. As I believe it has a fighter bay? I'm really not certain. And we've completed our mission, gaining some upgrade points and some scrap. I said this game has a lot of primary influences from games like FTL, and I can definitely see that in the art style, which is very, very much beautiful, smooth. And even for a PC, it looks like it has a lot of detail, like this is as far as I can zoom in, and even then, only when maximally zoomed in does it look a little blurry, and all the turrets are infinitely rotatable, and it generally looks very well polished. Now, game plays fast, Polish is fast, loading screens are fast, everything's fast about this game. The only thing fast, not fast about it is your progression. The progression in the game takes form in acquiring very powerful items, completing missions, destroying enemy ships, and generally conquering the galaxy as a marauding warlord. And just to show you, while you can purchase items for your ship as a form of progression, it's generally not recommended as, while you can get things at the very end like a nuke cannon or a particle turret, it's usually much better to search all these allied battle stations and ships and acquire items from there, as the items you can find are generally better than the ones you can build yourself. And on that note, let's continue jumping around through some combat. Now, right here... Oh, never mind. I thought it was actually something legitimately dangerous. The first couple of turns are at least nice enough not to destroy you completely and utterly, and that they at least give you a fair chance. Ah, here's one of the things where it would auto-focus, but I've just turned that off because I personally do not like it. Auto-focusing on that container down there, you detect the container in the sector it can hold valuable content, i.e. a little treasure that you can equip to your ship. Now these are quite common enough where it's not a humongous issue, and opening it up is not a bad thing, necessarily. But occasionally, traps will happen. Such as these little enemies. But, once again, it's early enough in the game where they are not going to screw you over for taking these decisions. And what did I grab? A Celestial Repair Beam. That would be nice if I had a much, much bigger ship, but it's also nice to sell to other battle stations as you fly by them. Which, unfortunately, I have yet to see if you can actually acquire a battle station that you can control. I have the idea... I'm under the impression that you can influence the way the things will head, like making sure allied ships survive, 
ensuring that the enemies will not be like oh, destroy your stations entirely. But I don't know if you can really affect the galaxy that much. I'd really appreciate it if that were actually a possibility. And before we actually go and attempt to fight them, let's uh, do a few more upgrades. Getting a few more ships and a little bit more shielding damage. And then upgrading this to be a little bit of a burst. Can I upgrade this at all? Nope. Well, on that note, let's go and see if we can take on this much larger enemy ship. As you can see, they have three smaller ones and a capital ship, which is a good high point for combat. Hopefully we can match it. Ooh, and that's our current objective. Let's focus everything we can on it. Thankfully it doesn't have a hangar bay, and since my ships are free, I will probably beat it. Now, you can easily have your ships focus on multiple targets at once. Well, if there are multiple capital ships at least. In this case, my ships are primarily focusing, at least I've ordered all my ships to focus on it, but most of your weapons will still independently target other things if they get close enough. Now, I haven't done anything with the blue subsystems, but that's because the blue subsystems are mostly useful for dealing with things like missiles, which normally bypass shields, as those blue subsystems hold shield modules, point defense, and other such glorious things like that. Which these missiles really do a number on you, especially if the enemy ship can stay this far away from you at all times. And I'm currently trying to get to the much faster and more maneuverable ship, so I can really start landing hits on him. As while my fighters are doing their best to whittle him down, they're not able to actively cause enough damage to put an end to him. And I'm taking a ton of damage as a result. Which, thankfully, you can do repairs on the fly, so that's not a humongous issue. Anyway, that seems like a good enough taste of gameplay. The only things I'm really missing are enemy battle station fights, which I don't really feel like showing, as it takes a while to build up to, and if I die, I die. Now, at the end of each match, there's a little score screen that you can get access to which generally shows off how well you've done, how many missions you've completed, how many enemies you've destroyed, and other things like that. And your score, as shown, will, or, and your score will determine how many points you get towards your next unlock. Naturally, a much higher score is better. And, aside from that, my last thing to speak of is really the music. Music's actually pretty nice. It gives off a really nice atmospheric feel, at least for like exploration of space, and the music also does change if you're in combat. Furthermore, music doesn't even seem that repetitive, at least from the hours I've played of it. At least they seem to have different enough tracks, and the tracks change often enough where it's not a humongous issue if the music is repetitive or not. Plus, you're not really expected to play this game. Often, you're more expected to play this in short bursts. Now, a few things I would change about the game itself, or at least a few things that give it a little low mark in my eyes, are the following. Uh, we entered into a black hole area, as there's some environmental effects in combat as well. This black hole will slowly crush our ship's hull in spite of the fact that we have shields and we can't repair here. Anyway, a few things that are important. One. There is no save or load. You have one save, and you get it by exiting to the main menu, which we will do, as this will be as this is close to the end of the review. And you can always reaccess, and it will drop you right back into the game from where you left off. Even if it's in the middle of combat, you can just exit the game whenever and pick it back up later. And there's also entire like other language system. I completely miss that. I realize that now. They have Dutch, Espanol, anything like that. So it can be played in any language you wish. I'm unfortunately American. I know what a tragedy. I can't look at any of the other languages nor very much read them. And with that, I think that'll end the review. Battle Station Harbinger is coming out February 24th for a price tag of what I would assume. I'm assuming that it's on the same price tag as the iOS, as I've tried to research it, I couldn't find anything of it. And overall, I give the game a very, very high mark. 
For a iOS to PC port, it's very well polished, the music's fairly nice, gameplay is pretty smooth, and it's very much easy to just drop in and drop out whenever you need to, and just play it like 15-20 minutes, drop out, come back in later, continue the story from where you last left off. And with that, I bid you adieu. This has been Brainboy20 with Brainy Reviews, Battle Station, Harbinger, and I am signing off. If you enjoyed the video, remember to like, comment, or subscribe, and I hope to see you all next time. Farewell.